The ongoing saga of the light rail project took center stage in Robbinsdale this week as the Metropolitan Council and Hennepin County sought feedback on route options. Um, it's just a way to get people to Target's headquarters in Brooklyn Park. And it will further divide our city because Highway um, 81 already divides our city from east to west. This will further divide it. Hennepin County and the Metropolitan Council are seeking input from the public on a draft route modification report that evaluates several route options for the Metro Blue Line extension. The proposed route along County Road 81 in Robbinsdale has plenty of critics who raise concerns about vehicle and pedestrian traffic, loss of parking, and disruptions to local businesses. However, there are people who are excited about the prospect of the train going through the northwest suburbs. Yeah, I mean, it's increasing our interest in staying here longer because it'll be easier to get around. We won't have to yeah, worry about cars as much. We've talked even about the possibility of being a one-car household in the future if something like this were to happen, so we're excited. A vote from cities along the proposed route is expected in 2023. Hennepin County Commissioner Kevin Anderson is marking his first year in office, representing Maple Grove. Shannon Sladden sat down with the District 7 Commissioner for this week's Newsmakers. You know, there's been a lot of work that's, uh, that we've done in Hennepin County. Uh, I mean, we've allocated over $240 million of uh, CARES Act money to affordable housing, I, a lot of really good programs, mental health, um, public safety, broadband initiatives that we've talked about previously. Uh, most recently, some of the things that I'm most proud of is uh, I had an amendment to add a a veterans memorial onto Hennepin County property, the first uh, veterans memorial for Hennepin County. I'm really excited it's going to be a public-private uh, partnership and so we'll be looking for other organizations to help make sure that we're raising veterans issues and taking care of them, including um, making sure that we're focusing on veterans homelessness. Uh, we have, my office is continually working with organizations to do that. I've also uh, introduced an amendment to uh, take into consideration uh, new development when we're evaluating our public works projects, whether it's maintenance or new, new build-outs, which is going to be really impactful for the western suburbs. And why is it important for your area? Because we used to see farms there not that long ago. You know, it, it really, so much of our District 7 has changed over the last 20, 10 years, um, that the way that we have developed around our county roads that were initially designed as county road, uh, country roads, sure. farm roads, uh, the nature of the roadway has changed so much. And so we really need to make sure that we are putting a spotlight on the way that those uh, changes have happened uh, the new ways that we need our roadways to work, um, and then make sure that it's that we're working with our state partners to uh, find the funding for it because sure. roads aren't cheap. That's right. <laughs> yep. Looping back to something you mentioned earlier, do we know where the Veterans Memorial will be yet, or is that still in the works? Uh, still in the works. We know where it's going to be at the Hennepin County Government Center Plaza. Um, we're looking at the, the north side, but uh, really we want to make sure that we are finding a, a space that is adequate and appropriate to uh, to honor our veterans. Something you mentioned before that you're hearing from folks about is their concern about public safety. Yeah. Um, what are you hearing from folks and what's being done? So, I mean, we have seen so much uh, around public safety, especially recently. Our cities are taking this very seriously. Uh, the county is at the table every step of the way. Um, one of the things that we're doing is expanding our embedded social work program with our local police departments so that they have more resources to address uh, community needs so that our police can do the work that they, they're hired to do. All right, we'll be following that in the next year. Thank Commissioner you. Commissioner Kevin Anderson, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's not the winter carnival in St. Paul, but many people are driving through a Brooklyn Park neighborhood to check out a homemade ice castle. As reporter Sonny Goins and photographer Dustin Scholl show us, a lot of hard work went into making it. I did a, a little opening, like a castle opening with a drawbridge and some windows. You can't miss the ice masterpiece at 1900 Brookdale Drive in Brooklyn Park. 
Over 100 people have stopped by it and uh, asked about it and took pictures. Jeremy Van Kempen is the artist behind the ice castle. I didn't have a blueprint to go by, so I sort of just won it, you know. He used his construction skills to craft the structure. I staggered each block so that it would look like an actual castle. A lot of long hours and hard work went into the project. At first, they would take a day and a half to two days to freeze, and then when it got that cold snap, it was seven hours. Every seven hours, I could do eight blocks. Jeremy used large plastic totes to build the blocks of ice. 16 gallon totes and I use like shoebox uh, totes for the little, the front wall. At night, the ice castle turns magical. Bright lights reflect off the snow blocks. It's only one LED and Christmas lights, yep. It's truly a labor of love. The winter wonderment was inspired by his five-year-old daughter, Violet. She's like, Daddy, will you build me an ice castle? I said, well, of course I will. I can't let my little daughter down, you know? His daughter has yet to see the ice castle in person because she lives up north. She's five years old. She, she likes shapes, so I put a bunch of shapes on top. The ice castle is bringing light to neighbors, friends, and strangers during the most frigid, darkest time of the year. It's fun to drive by and just see somebody um, enjoying winter and all of the uh, minus, minus zero temperatures and what you can do with it. At first, it didn't look like it was much, you know. It turned out nice. Jeremy says this is his way of celebrating Minnesota winters. I love winter. I love all seasons. Couldn't ask for a better state to live in. In Brooklyn Park, Sonia Goins, CCX News.